This is the most complex ecosystem on Earth, but one which depends on a very delicate balance. The tropical rainforests act as climate regulators for the entire planet. The climatological and hydrological effects of the tropical rainforests are so powerful that they can be measured thousands of kilometers from the tropics. Quite simply, these jungles manufacture clouds. In October, the monsoons arrive in Borneo. Then it never stops raining, which is unbearable even for an orangutan. But if you are capable of building a nest, you can also make a leaf umbrella. Or is it a hat? The rain begins life in the forest and in the end returns to it, torrentially for days on end. It can sometimes rain for weeks without stopping. The water, when it falls on the jungle, does not cause flooding, nor is it absorbed by fertile soil. It simply flows where it needs to flow, part of it to the plant life, and part of it to the rivers, and so to the sea. Simple, predictable, but essential. This contract with life is quite clear. There's no small print. Without the jungle, there would be no clouds. Without clouds, there would be no rain. Without rain, no water. And without water, the soil simply dies. Lifeless land and overheating from the sun because there is no cloud cover. The rest is easy to imagine. Whatever follows, we are doomed to disappear. They first, but there can be no doubt we will not be far behind. The entire planet needs these jungles to continue existing. It is a question of life or death, a problem beyond countries, governments or religions. Echo means home, and there is no reason why ecology and economy should be in conflict. Meanwhile, the systematic destruction of the last remaining tropical rainforests continues. As the 20th century ended, we continued to kill. What happens in the 21st century depends on us. The yellow machines continue to eat up the jungle of the Red Spirit. The giant dipterocarps, oaks, chestnuts and durians are cut down for their wood, which is then exported to the rich world where people choose to turn a blind eye to the origin of what they want to buy. Almost all the rainforests are in poor countries for which they represent their only resource. And they claim they too have the right to the same industrialization that cleared the forests of rich countries hundreds of years ago. But indiscriminate tree felling would simply be repeating the same mistake, and in the end will do nothing to improve the situation of these countries. Together, we can avoid it. The jungles of Borneo have recently suffered severe droughts as a result of the El Niño phenomenon, and this has made them more vulnerable to fire. But investigations indicate that fires have been deliberately provoked by the timber companies. There are even gangs of illegal timber merchants who act with total impunity. 
The government is trying to combat this voracious demand for wood through an international system of exports with certificates guaranteeing it was obtained in a manner which is sustainable and compatible with the environment. Following the most recent fires, it has been calculated that farmers in the areas around the forest took in some 1,000 young orangutans, orphaned when their mothers died, trying to rescue them from the flames. Many of them have been lucky after all and have arrived here at the Sepilok Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. The first thing they do is to examine the new arrival as many of them have suffered considerable trauma and stress during transportation. The next thing is something no child likes, but it's necessary to know the temperature of its body, a body that must be cleaned so as not to transmit any unwanted guests to its future companions in the orphanage. With evident satisfaction, the little orangutan only misses one thing. Well, not anymore. Here they seem to read its thoughts. Since the 1950s, hundreds of young orangutans have been captured for pets or to be sold as their jungles disappear. When they were confiscated by the authorities, the need arose to provide them with a place where they could be looked after, and then later released into the wild. A mother is so important in the life of an orangutan that without her to teach them, they do not know what to eat. Here in Sepilok, they work to teach the young everything they need to be able to live in the jungle. But Sepilok also has a second and extremely important function. While they are growing up and learning about the resources of the jungle, the young monkeys can be visited by people. In this way, people have the chance to come into direct contact with an animal it would be difficult to see in its natural environment. To know is to love, and anyone who visits this place and looks into the eyes of one of these orphans immediately understands the need for them to continue living in the wild. It is not a zoo. The aim is to return these animals to the jungle which they should never have had to leave. Now a team of biologists, vets and carers works not only to ensure that each individual survives and grows, but also to understand more about their physiology, their diseases and the complex behavior of these animals who remind us so much of ourselves. The training necessary so they can return to their natural habitat and fend for themselves must be progressive but careful. 
Excessive protection would make them dependent on humans and so unable to completely identify with the jungle. They will soon leave here. In a short time, the bright, wild gleam will return to their eyes. They will go back, that is, if there is any jungle to go back to.